book. So he did the, this terrific Dark Angels project over July, and uh, I'm going to put a link in the video description so you can check that out. But he asked me if I could do a Fluff Hunters video on the Lizard Men, which is an army for Warhammer Fantasy that uh, he could listen to while he's painting. So here it is, a little background and history and perspective on one of the Lizardmen, uh, one of the most iconic armies in Warhammer, the Lizardmen. So yeah, there's a shot of them right here. They're the blue guys. And I, I think they went with blue to separate them and make them distinct from orcs and goblins who were green. But I'm thinking if, if orcs and goblins didn't exist, the Lizardmen probably would have been painted more more uh, in a green tone, but uh, the blue seems to be pretty pretty awesome, I guess. Uh, the Lizardmen are the oldest nation of the Warhammer world, staunch opponents of the powers of chaos. They follow the great plan of the old ones. So I, I would kind of compare them to like the most lawful of the races because they don't care about um, doing things that that is beneficial to other races or or um, or they're not good or bad they're, they're just really all about this um, driving chaos out of the old world because they were there from the very beginning before any of the other races the lizard men are ruled by the slan slan are the big toad guys and they are former servants of the late old ones there are five slan of the second spawning and each of them rules over a single city while the younger slan act as lieutenants. However, most of the time, the slan are in deep meditation, giving orders and commands very rarely. Therefore, the day-to-day -day decisions are made by the skinks, and who uh, they are unlike the warlike Saurus and the large Croxagores, are quite intelligent and mentally flexible. So in the old Lizardman army, when they first released, they had the slan, which were the big uh, toad guys. They're like the generals and they were uh, magic users and they were kind of like the the big leaders of the army then you had the skinks which were the little little guys and um you had the big beefy warriors were the the saurus who weren't very intelligent but they were uh, really good at fighting and then you had these giant guys the croxagores these really uh larger sized saurus uh they're like a different race they're like um i guess they kind of remind me of crocodiles where and uh, they were the, the the really big beefy hard hitters. So in the fluff of the his of the lizardmen, uh, historically in the Warhammer universe, in the setting, they are from this area in the world called Lustria. And Lustria, if we were to compare the old world and its maps that they originally made to our world, it would be South America because it is at that um in the new world oops don't kill it it is in the new world um and the old world is kind of like europe right but it's in the south part and the top part is nagaroth so i guess that means that the writers of warhammer fluff and fiction thought that uh dark elves would equate them to like america or something what's going on down here my computer's running really slow so um this this is the page off the wikipedia uh from the lexicanum and it's the basic Lizardman page. And then I also loaded up some other pages. So we'll take a look at them and maybe closing some closing some tabs will make this computer run a little bit better. So originally in the in the fiction, I'll just talk about what this thing is loading up. Originally in the fiction, the Lizardmen were created when the old ones came to the Warhammer world. And uh, the old ones are the ones that created all the other races, like the elves, the dwarves. I think they created the humans. Uh, they arrived millennia ago for mysterious purposes. And in the history, they were the ones that created the Lizardmen and they created the Slan. They only dealt with the Slan of the first spawning, who then delivered their orders to the younger Slan. So basically, the old ones came, they looked at the world, there wasn't really anything, there was no intelligent life in the Warhammer world, and the old ones said, Okay, let's create some races and populate this world and make it make it good and and lawful and all sorts of great stuff. So they created the slan and they want they meant for the slan to be like their servants to kind of go around and uh, carry their orders around. And in return, they made the other lizardmen races like the Saurus to do the heavy lifting and the Croxagores to um, 
to to help transport and move stuff around. And so let's see. It was the Slan who, following the instructions of the old ones, changed and molded the planet, bringing it closer to its sun, splitting its supercontinent into separate landmasses. Necessary for the old ones were two warp gates, one located on the North Pole and the other on the South Pole. Unfortunately, for unknown reasons, the gates began to malfunction, and in the end they collapsed. And through them, the raw power of chaos began to affect the world. The old ones tried to uh, contain all the demons that came pouring out, but in the end, they failed. And they were aliens or aboard silver ships on the seas of the stars around 15,000 years before the coming of Sigmar. And yeah, so it says the Slan were their servants. The old ones were said to be immensely powerful and able to change the world, alter its environment, oops, raise oceans or mountains, and even change the shape of the land to suit their purposes. So th this is a great read for anyone who's interested in the history of the the Warhammer uh, fantasy world and its fiction because the old ones were basically kind of like its creation story. And um, they, there's a great little section in here where the high elves kind of make mention of the old ones and compare them to like their gods and stuff. And uh, even the dwarves too, because I think the old ones created, yeah, the, during this age it is said that the godlike old ones are Credited for creating the elder races of elves and dwarves. Oh, I wonder what when the humans came. So there's a lot of um, like all of the other armies, elves and dwarves, the older races in the Warhammer world, have their origin stories, their creation stories, I guess, and a lot of them kind of tie into the old ones because the old ones were the ones who created them. All right, so you can read more about that if you want. The next I want to talk about is the Old Ones came to the Warhammer world to enact this thing called the Great Plan. And uh, this is kind of important because in the end of times, which is the current big campaign thing for Warhammer Fantasy, and it's, it's changing everything up, and it has Nagash. And uh, right now we're on, as, as I'm filming this, we're on book number two. Hey, how come? And... Um, in the beginning of book number one, the Nagash book, there's a little blurb of the Lizardmen who are saying that, um, which says that the, the Great Plan has failed. So this is interesting because the Great Plan was a part of the Lizardmen fluff and fiction since the very, very beginning of the creation of the army. And the Old Ones had this Great Plan and they told the Slan, um, you know, no matter what, you have to enact this Great Plan and it's going to bring law and order and and uh, stability to the world. So, I'll just close this tab. So, what they wanted to do was have the slan, or, or eventually have the great plan for everybody in the Warhammer world, and it was going to create law and order and keep the chaos uh, from contaminating the world. But unfortunately, with all of the events coming about in the current history and the uh, the current fiction, there is no possibility the great plan has failed. So it says that the Lizardmen are beginning their exodus. And nobody knows what that means because it's never been mentioned in any of the, the army books or in any of the... Oh, boy. Okay, well, we don't, we don't have to see this. In, in any of the, the source books, there is no mention of, what well, what does the Lizardmen do if the great plan doesn't work or if it fails? So uh, this is, I guess, one way of the writers saying that the fiction is going in a whole new direction because there's never any way of moving the fiction forward before and this is the first time in the history of the game which is why it's so monumental that there's um it's a new beginning for the fiction okay so i had opened all these tabs it looks like they're all dead though they died uh, you can check them out on the lexicanum on the wiki page they have like a breakdown of all the different races and stuff. I hope the Warhammer page is open. Okay, so here let's take a look at the models because that's mainly, of, I, I would say the majority of the time what attracts people to an army is a mod, what the models look like. So as you can see, they uh, these are the classic models. They are like humanoid with lizard features, like lizard heads, and they have a very, what is this? What's that word? Old, old Mexican 
Incan, Mayan, Aztec. Yeah, very Aztec kind of look to them because they've got these, um, like you could tell with the with the with the tools that they use, their face masks and stuff. They have a very Aztec look, and especially their names. Look at this, Tehenhawin. Oh yeah, the feathers. My lady boss says, look at the feathers. So that kind of also ties into them being placed in the Warhammer map on the South American continent. Uh, okay, so here's the lizard, Lizardman page on the Warhammer Armies tab, so you can kind of take a look at all of the different models they have. They've got Jungle Swarms, Cyrus Old Blood, which I painted up, Oxyotl, Skink Priest with Feathered Cloak, that's pretty awesome. What? What's so funny? No, it's not a Skank Priest, it's a Skink Priest. And then they have these Chameleon Skinks down here that look like Jackson Chameleons with the big googly eyes. Skink Priest over here. This was the new model that they released. Chakax. Scar Veteran with Battle Standard. Golrock, the albino. So he's all white. So here are the models, and they're really, really awesome. They're fun to paint if you like painting um, these kinds of colors or these kinds of models. Basically, if Oh, Teto Echo. I love this model. Look at him. He's looking into his little glass crystal ball. What I like to think of Lizardmen as dinosaurs, right? They look like crocodiles and chameleons and big giant toads and like dinosaurs. Look at these new monsters that they released. Bastilodon, Pterodons, Stegodons, dinosaurs riding dinosaurs. That's kind of like the flavor of this army. Dinosaurs riding dinosaurs. So, um, they're awesome to see on a battlefield. I once saw a Lizardman army completely painted, and uh, it was it was pretty cool. So, they're definitely one of the most unique looking armies. They go away from the humanoid aesthetic of like the humans, Bretonians, elves, dwarves. They they don't look anything at all like anything human. They're um, just humanoid shaped, but the colors you can get really creative with them. And uh, they're just really good for if, if you want to be creative about how you how you paint your army. And this has got so much like Aztec flavor to the standard with the sculpts here and then the stone wheels in the center and the interlocking gold pieces. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at it. I found this tab of what it says the Lizardmen are doing currently. Lustria is hard pressed by the demon armies. Mazda Mundi orders the beginning of the exodus, which is otherwise not discussed. So they don't really talk about what it is. It's just a little piece of, of fiction right at the beginning to draw you into the book and to say, hey, we're changing it up. Now alternate sculpts. You don't always have to stick with Games Workshop if you don't exclusively play at a Games Workshop store. Most other stores will let you play with models as long as they represent them. So Avatars of War is one of my favorite alternate alternate sculpts. Um, and they are really cool. This Lizardman Hero Kit right here has a lot of the Saurus uh, aesthetic to it. The like Tyrannosaurus Rex face, the Aztecian looking uh, weapons with the feathers, but they just look so much better sculpted. Look at these, um, the muscles and the way, the detail and everything. Although with the new Lizardmen models, like this came out a, a while back before the Lizardmen were re-released, and so this, um, you know, it, it still kind of stands up to the current range, but yeah, they, they look, the, the current Lizardmen models look pretty good. So there you go, Yonavik H. I hope that kind of gave you a little bit of a of a good feel for the Lizardmen. And anybody who's interested in the fluff and the fiction of the Lizardmen, they are uh, one of the iconic races I think that Warhammer has that is kind of like really exclusive, I think. Although other other games and other fictions and other miniature games might have lizard-like creatures, I think the way that Warhammer Fantasy and Games Workshop kind of made them, like with this Aztec kind of looking flavor, I think it really makes them stand apart. So the the fluff and the fiction is so, so rich with uh, the old ones and their purpose and, and what their motivations are. 
like they really are like other civilizations you know they're about like building power and creating empires and getting as strong as possible and ruling the planet but the lizard men all they really cared about from the beginning was driving out chaos and um, creating balance in the world and closing the chaos gates and I think that's a pretty cool way of describing them so hopefully that will interest you in doing some research of your own in the lizard men maybe collecting an army of your own or maybe just painting up a model and uh, seeing what it's like thanks for watching everybody i hope you enjoyed this little fluff hunters video and we'll see you in the next one let us players